Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Pastor, I want to uh, share a little bit about last night's message. Uh, it was out of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. I spoke to many people, and many of those who may be watching were here or tuned in last night to listen to it. And All seven of them? <laughs> it was a powerful message, and it was... Uh, not so much about children, yes it was, but the importance that we have as parents mm -hmm. in leading our children. And I think one of the, the more powerful things was with your own personal application that you used. And then at the end of the message, you read the lyrics of Cat in the Cradle. Yeah. And that hit, that hit me. I was thinking of you. <laughs> was it the silver spoon or the, <laughs> you know, it's the a cow cat. jump over the moon? <laughs> it's a cat, because you're a cool cat. <laughs> <laughs> and and not only myself, but as I spoke with uh, a couple of the brothers, even today, were saying that that message was and was very powerful, and it caused them to think. One of the brothers particularly came in, and I met with him, and he was sharing how uh, his wife particularly was even crying because it, it was just a powerful message. And you take last night's message, and you bring that into our daily living as responsible parents. And then I think about everything around us. We're in our last days. It's just dark. And I wanted to ask you, has this has there been a loss of urgency for Christians today to live as if today is the last day that Jesus would be coming? Well, you know, when the Lord was speaking concerning conditions that were just prior to the finalization of uh you know, world history as we know it. He said, uh, when the Son of Man shall uh, come, will, sh shall he find faith on the earth? You know, um, there'll be, it, it's going to be a time when, um, when the, the world is going to be caught up with the day-to-day -day affairs and are going to cease being aware of, uh, of the moments that we're living in, John. And and Jesus spoke a lot about that in different places. And Paul, when Paul was speaking concerning conditions, when he was writing to Timothy, he said, men shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, and they're going to be disobedient to, to, to parents. And, you know, uh, just it's going to be a narcissistic, self-serving environment, which we find ourselves in now. And so even as last night I was mentioning, and, and with in no way of intentionally causing people to to become guilty, you know, because guilt doesn't do anything but cripple, but to give people an opportunity to think of of uh, where they stand right now and in their family. And, and I was prompted and felt so bold as to ask the question, uh, what would your children say uh, is the most important thing in your life? I didn't realize that that little question there was going to trigger so much of a response, and it did. It did. Even my own son said the moment I asked that, he began to wonder and even asked his kids, well, what matters to me, right? I so, did the same thing last night, yes. Yeah, and you're still healing after what they told you, right, John? It's, for some reason, they said cheeseburgers, burritos, tacos, well, you know? That, that. Just call it food, and we'll just put it all under one kind of banner, right? No, uh, I, I do think that that's important. I mean... If you ask my kids, what is the most important thing to my father? I would like them to know that it's the Lord. And, and, and so that's not a, an intentional condemning of or causing unintentional pain or grief. It is a nice uh, self-evaluation, right? So yeah, in the last days, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, narcissists and, and materialists. And then he goes on about the rebellion and disobedience that that will make up the society just prior to the uh, return of Christ. And I, I think we're seeing the, the, um, the seeds of that uh, sprouting even as, as we're speaking when we consider the conditions that we here in the United States live in. And not every state is the same. I, I happen to live in, we happen to live in one of the more perverse states in the nation. California has lost its beauty. California has has lost its allure and many people are leaving because of the 
that just the poor conditions, poor government, and you know the the lack of civility, the lack of uh, of um, education that that is centered on what is right rather than trying to brainwash and all of that. Our children, yeah, we're we're losing that right now, and many Christian parents that I speak to, you speak to, uh, are voicing concern. They're voicing. Um, what am I going to do? How am I going to combat this? And all. So yeah, last night I was trying to share with the people that it, it we, we should do all things. I didn't say this last night, but I'll say it this way now. We should do our life as if Christ is even at the door. Mm-hmm. We we should be living as if we're preparing our children to, uh, to see him face to face. It's been said um, that uh, if you don't worship Christ, you will worship Antichrist. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no two other two, two options. There's no other options. That's just biblical fact. To bow your knee to Christ voluntarily now, or ultimately to bow your knee to Christ involuntarily, though you will be more than willing at that moment, then. So we make the choice to bow our knee now. What's that mean? Well, that ought to mean that we're raising our children in the knowledge and nourishment of the Lord. It, it should mean that that our children know that we have priorities that matter, that that serving God on a Sunday is more important than, than being at a soccer practice or a track meet on a Sunday. Because I talk, and you do, to parents uh, on occasion who say, I don't know what's happening. My kids don't want to go to church anymore. And then when you begin to dig below the surface, well, they haven't been in church for, for months, weeks, years sometimes because they were on some traveling soccer team and or they've been playing some you know softball or whatever the sport may be on Sunday and what you did is you gave up your children you gave up their future you don't believe ultimately how evil this world really is and you really are not seeing the battle for your children's minds and lives and souls you're not seeing that and I really think that in light of the return of Christ and the conditions that are just straight out of Scripture that we're seeing ourselves in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and other places that speak up, this is the way it shall be. You know, we need to wake up and, our, and the parents need to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I like when you closed with that Scripture last night, mm. that all the people that were were repeating it. It was amazing to hear that. Oh yeah, that was that was cool. cool. They they were just in in saying that in agreement. And yeah, it, that was kind of interesting yes. and neat. And because as you just said, you just refreshed me. Yes, I I very slowly said, as for me in my house, just to emphasize what, and I I heard them joining in. We will serve the Lord. That Wasn't was that cool. Precious? Yeah, that was really cool. You know, I, I read this meme and and you hit it right on the head, Pastor, with this. It said, if I teach my son to keep his eye on the ball and take his, instead of keeping his eyes on Jesus, I have failed as a father. That's, that's very true. You know, I, I as shared last night, I, I think that sports and activities and all of that are very important in many ways, in many levels, you know, physically. You know, our bodies can remain in some some kind of shape, which... Is, is a good thing. I think that we should take care of our bodies, etc. And and there's a lot of fun in playing various sports. I played them for many, many years. Wish I could still do it, but I can't. You know, and intellectually, you know, there are many things we can do intellectually that broaden our understanding, develop us in many ways as people and all. And yes, let's, let's make sure we take care of our body. Let's take care of our mind. But sometimes that is to the neglect of the soul. You know, Jesus said, I have bread that you know nothing Mm -hmm. of, you know, and the bread of life, Jesus himself, he wants to give to us so that we have spiritual understanding in life, you know, and and it's like, it's like the lawyer who approaches Christ and, and says, what good, you know, he's asking about what is the great commandment, right? And, and Jesus gives them the most famous scripture that every Jew at his time, even to this day would know, uh, Deuteronomy 6, he speaks concerning, uh, the Lord thy God is one, love him with everything, right? But he said the second is like unto the first, love your neighbor as yourself. And so 
after he speaks concerning that, the man says, oh, to do these things is greater than the sum total of all, all sacrifices and rituals. And Jesus says, you are not far from the kingdom, which exposes that, that to Jesus that this lawyer who was really a Pharisaic plant actually heard and began to comprehend and took those thoughts and put them together mm -hmm. and realized there's more to life than simple ritual religious observation. That's, the, that's our task is to help our children to know that there is more to following Christ than going to church on Sunday occasionally or maybe having a Wednesday night or, or even reading their devotionals. There's, there's more to following Jesus than just the intellectual content of it. But to have our souls fed, it, it would mean that we are to be nourished by the word of life, to take it in like a newborn baby desires the sincere milk of the word. Well, we are too, so that we may grow thereby, right? So you know, he's the bread of life, and his blood is supplying life to us. His flesh, his blood has been yielded to us, and there needs to be a deep, not only a, a appreciation and comprehension, but there needs to be a deep application. And, and when that occurs in our lives, then we can flow over to our children and the children will be able to say, uh, my dad or my mama, these were sincere Christians and, and any sin that I'm committing is against the light. I've been trained better. And so I, I really feel that, that that has been a growing life goal for me, John. And, and my children are out of my house. They have children of their own. Uh, I no longer have that primary spiritual responsibility for raising them in the ways of the Lord, but I continued to have the influence in their lives to keep their feet to the fire and to walk with Jesus Christ. I, I love what you said last night in regards to this, is that you were so faithful, <clears throat> and you made it clear, I'm not patting myself on the, on the back, you were just sharing about how consistent you were in giving them devotions, and the point that you made that would really just hit me was that our children, uh, because we're born of a sinful nature, yes that they're gonna, there's gonna be a time where they're gonna rebel. And they if you do. poured into them as much as you have and they're gonna rebel, that final chapter, as you're mentioning, they're gonna return. How difficult will it be if that foundation is never If they have none of that information, I believe that, uh, at least this is my practical belief, uh, that our consciences are formed by the various teachings we receive over time. So conscience doesn't lead you to Christ. It either accuses or excuses you, but it could excuse you for doing the wrong thing simply because <laughs> others are doing it, right? So the conscience is really not, is not the, the Holy Spirit. The conscience is just something that can be sensitive to tell you right from wrong. So if you're informing that conscience with the word of God, then you have the supplement and you actually have the power there so that when that child is in the back seat of a car or some boyfriend's room and he's moving on, on her to complete a desire he has to no concern for her feelings or dreams plans or what you would like for her life he just wants what he wants right now she's she's god willing going to have the ability to say this is not right the word of god teaches me otherwise shouldn't have gotten myself into this position i better get out of it at least we did our best to inform them on what is right or wrong but if we say well do what your heart tells you well my heart is desperately wicked it's deceitful who can know it? And God says, I, the Lord, I know your heart. And that's why he gave us his word. That's why he gave us his light. That's why we have his spirit. That's why we have a company of fellow believers. That's why we serve him. That's why all of these things are so important. So when a parent neglects these things, when they kiss them goodbye, when they go to school and say, well, good luck, have a good day, or when they put them in bed and they're sitting on their own couch to watch the movies that they watch and the children can hear the sounds of the dialogue, and daddy's watching a dirty movie or mama's watching some soap opera and they're hearing this well you know all the things that that father or mother says are being washed mm -hmm. away by the things they're doing right and so sincerity matters it, it does faith matters and we make our mistakes and we make stupid decisions but when we're aware when we know what is right john we ought to do that especially at the sake and for the sake of my children and grandchildren's souls and and I think last night some people did get it. I, I think they did, and I, I pray that we see fruit from that. And if you happen to miss last night's message, you can actually go to our Facebook page, Calvary Chapel Chino Valley's Facebook page, and watch it 
or go to our YouTube page, Calvary Chapel Chino Valley YouTube, and you can actually uh, download and, and watch the services. Again, it was very impactful and it, and it ministered to a lot of people. And that's a question I went home right away and asked my kids the same thing and, and Livy and and a couple of brothers told me they went home and did the same thing. We heard David Aaron also mention yeah. that. And so yeah. that that question was a question that we should live by every single Amen. day. Amen, it drives you. And uh, so pastor, thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Do want to invite you to come on out to our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. And and you mentioned a little bit about what your message is going to be about. Uh, and so what come check it out. What is the great commandment? What yes. is the greatest commandment? And uh, and that kind of ties in with our Wednesday night message. In, in a way, in, in it a does. Way. Yeah, and so uh, it's amazing how it's just kind of flowing together. So come on out. Again, if you missed last night's message, you can find it on our, on our church's uh, Facebook page and YouTube. And we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. God bless you. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.